Hey my friend, this is Darnell Clark, your industry expert in this career game, The Answer Man. Hey, today's topic is how do you recover after you get fired? So stay tuned. I got a lot to say about this topic. Hey my friend, this is Darnell Clark again. Hey, today's topic is how do you recover from being fired? <laughs> so I have an interesting story. I have an interesting uh, career, really. I don't know anybody who has been fired more than me. I've been fired five times. So let me identify what I mean by being fired. Anytime you've been laid off, downsized, right-sized, job terminated, job eliminated, whatever they want to call it, you've been fired. Ah, oh, darn it, get out of here, man. Just because I got laid off, that doesn't mean I got fired. When they fire you, they ask you to leave. When they, when they uh, downsize you, right size you, lay you off, they ask you to leave. That's being fired. Let me tell you something. If you don't think being downsized or laid off is fired, try to stay past your exit date. Hey, your ex date darn it is gone. Hey, I, I didn't feel like leaving right now, so I'm gonna try to stay for a couple more weeks, maybe a couple more months, right? Don't worry about it, I'll take care of you know. And he said, no, 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 your ex date was last Friday. It's now Monday, you're done. No, 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 I'm, not, I'm really not done. I, I, I'm not done right now. First thing they're gonna do is call security. Security, and if you start bucking against security, they're gonna be called a 911 for police officers to take you out in handcuffs because you have been arrested for pa for past trust for past trusting, right? If that's not being fired, I don't know what is. Ask any friend, family member that you know that's been laid off. Ask them what it feel like. They're gonna tell you it don't feel good. And it feel like I just got fired because you did. So let's call it what it truly is. They call him really these nice names, downsized and laid off and job eliminated. Let's call it what it truly is. You've been fired. So I've been fired more, more than everybody, anybody I know. When I, so my, 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 my history is uh, I'm an ex-professional baseball player. I blew my knee out really early. I went back to school and got my computer science degree and an MBA and I went into the IT field working for companies like IBM, Ernst & Young, GE, Coca-Cola. And I don't know anybody who has got to the point of their senior manager, director level in their second 10 years of their career who's, got more, who's gotten fired more than I. My first 10 years, I was leaving jobs left and right. I was a perpetual professional job hopper. Yes, yes I was, right? And, and, and then when I got to my 10th year, I started for the first time getting laid off. For the first time, I worked for IBM three separate times. The first two times at IBM, I quit. And I went and found another job, got some more money. It was all about the cash for me. The third time, for the first time in my career, I got laid off. I got laid off. And then a, a two or three years later, I started, I started doing a few things and I got with the state of Georgia. You got a new governor comes in, he comes in and lay off 70 people all in one day. I was one of them, right? I was one of them. Then GE, I have a team of 50. GE comes in and say, hey, our organization at Digital Energy at the time, we're not making the money we truly wanna make. We got a downsize in Darnell. We downsizing you and your whole organization. 50 people, gone. Coca-Cola, same way. Hey. Now for the second part of my, my career, I'm getting laid off more than anybody I know. If I'm supposed to be all this, all this in a bag of chips, a director, senior director, rock and rolling, hundred million dollars in budget, delivering quality stuff to all these organizations, why the heck am I keep getting laid off? Fired, why, why, why am I getting fired? My wife, she started working for IBM right when she graduated from college, and she was working for IBM for 20, 25, 30 years. Never once got laid off. But me, I, 
keep getting laid off. What the heck's going on? In the beginning, I used to say, hey, I'm just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then when I got mutual agreement of leaving with Coca-Cola, ah, something was wrong. I started realizing something is not right. I realized it wasn't them. It was me. That's right. It was me. See, when I kept leaving these companies, I've had 25 jobs in my career. Yeah, 25. Not Burger King, McDonald's, working at Macy's or some re retail organization. No, I graduated from college with a computer science degree and an MBA a few years later. And I went on into the marketplace and I went from job to job to job. All these high profile companies. Yep, 25 of them. <laughs> Right, 25 of them. And I started realizing in the beginning of my career, I started leaving jobs. In the last part of my career, I started getting fired. The question is, why did I keep getting fired? Because I was freaking average. That's right, I said average. See, the longest I ever worked for one organization was only three years. I didn't know nothing. See, by the time you get in your 40s, you're supposed to know something. That's when you're supposed to be you know, coming to the table, bringing all you got and knowing something. But since I never stayed in long enough to know anything, I was always a jack of all trades and a master of none. At the end of the day, when organizations decide who are they gonna keep and who are they gonna let go, they let go average people. And I was just flat out average. I was a perpetual job hopper. And when I was leaving, I had no strategy for leaving. I didn't, I just left because another organization contacted me and was throwing cash at me. And yeah, boys, they throw the cash at me. Whew. One company, when I was working for IBM, the second time, I was really rock and roll. IBM said, okay, Darnell, we see that you got some potential. And they put all this, all the, the weight of IBM behind me and said, okay, Darnell, we want you to be a general manager and boom. And then these companies start calling me. This one company called me up out of the blue and said, hey, we got your name from somebody. We think you are the perfect person for this director's position. I said, I'm not interested. And she said, hey, Hear me out. I said, I'm not interested. I'm working for IBM. I'm rocking, rocking and rolling for IBM. And she said, hey, whatever you are making at IBM, we'll double it. I said, ma'am, 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 hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you know what I'm making right now, man. I'm making some serious cash. She said, I don't care what you're making. Whatever you making, we'll double it. She said, what harm would it come to come up to Massachusetts for one day and talk to us? I said, okay. What harm would it be? So I, so they say, they, they, they sent me to Massachusetts. They red carpeted. They sent the stretch limo to my house. They sent me to the airport. I didn't even know you can go on a tarmac and get right on a plane. It was a personal Learjet. I didn't even know you could do that. All right. I'm the only person on the plane. They fly me to Massachusetts. We go to lunch. Right, they said, all right, come in at 10, 10, 30. We have an hour conversation. We go to lunch for two and a half hours, and they said, okay, that's it. I'm like, that's it? We got back on the plane, I came back to Atlanta. The next morning, around 9, 9, 30, FedEx shows up with the package, with the offer package. Yes, they doubled my salary, and they gave me a 30% signing bonus with the check already in the FedEx envelope. I'm like, are you kidding me? And what did I do? I left IBM for that company. Yes, I did. And I did that for every time I left a company in my first 10 years for that cash. That Chris Crackley, curvaceous, hard, cold cash money. That was my career. That's all I did. And then the second 10 years, things changed. So the question that I start asking myself why was I get, keep getting fired those last 10 years? And I did some soul searching. I, I did a soul searching and now I'm working with Coca-Cola as in, working with Coca-Cola as a consultant management. Anytime you hear somebody is a management consultant, 
know this, they're making a ton of cash. All right, Darnell, how much money you make it? Hey, I don't mind talking money. Don't, never have. I'm making $250, not $1,000, $250 an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Add it up, $250 an hour times eight, whatever figure that is, times five, whatever that is, times 50. Because I had two, year, two, two weeks of vacation, you know, it was 52 weeks in a year. Add it up. That's how much I was making. And I hated it. Oh, did I hate that job. I couldn't be great at what I was doing if you don't love what you do. So I, 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 I talked to my boss. We had a mutual agreement that I wasn't the right person for that job. I did some soul searching. I went, I went in my prayer closet. I had a little talk with God. Now I'm in my, my career 20 years. I had a little talk with God. I had to go talk to my boss. No, not the boss at the job. My boss, right? I'm married, been married 25 years. That's my boss, my wife. And I had a conversation with my boss and I said, I'm done with IT. She said, what do you mean you're done? I said, I'm done. She said, what are you gonna do? I said, I don't know right now, but what I do know, I cannot be great at my job if I don't love what I do. All I will ever be is average and average people gets fired. So I created and craft within me. So I, I've been self-aware for the past five years. I've been self-aware. What does that mean? I know what I like. I know what I don't like. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. I only do things that I like and have the ability to excel at because it's part of who I am. So let me give you five action steps that you need to become self-aware. You have to become self-aware to play this career game because if you don't, they're going to fire you because companies don't pay for average people. And I know we here in America, we just a bunch of average people, but not you. You wouldn't be listening to me right now talking about a career if you wasn't deciding I wanted more in life, I wanted more in my career than just being an average worker. No, not you, my friend. So let me give you five steps that you need to become self-aware so you can excel at this career game. You have to determine what you like and what you don't like. Yeah. See, I recognize something when I start going through all these companies. I never did like the job. I only liked it because they paid me the money. See, when I graduated from college, now when I blew my knee out, I went to college and I talked to a consultant, uh, to, to a counselor real quick, and I told her I wanted to be in sports. What she heard me, what she thought she heard me say, I want to be a coach. I didn't want to be no coach. I wanted to be in the sport industry. But back then, there was no sport industry. The sport industry was coaching. She said, for you, Darnell, to be a coach, you have to be, get a, a teacher's degree in teacher's college. And she sent me over to teacher's college. I never, met it. I never made it over there. I didn't want to be a teacher, and I didn't want to get a, a degree uh, education and to be a, a teacher, to be a coach. I want to be no coach. I wanted to work in the profession of sports, right? So she sent me over there. I didn't. I had a friend and she was in engineering and she said, hey, if you want to make some money, get, a, get an engineering degree. See, I knew I wasn't smart enough to be in engineering, but I thought I might be smart enough to get a technology computer science degree. That degree was so hard. Oh my God, it was so hard, but I got through it. And when I disengaged with my natural inclination of sports, I disengaged what God created me to do with sports. I used to think everybody wanted to be in sport industry. No, that's not necessarily true. Only true, the true people want to be in sports are athletes or want to be athletes, but most people don't want to be in sports. When I decided to go in computer science and not in the sports, I disengaged what God created me to do. And every job I had, I hated it. And only the only reason I was there because I liked the cash. So number one, to determine, determine what you like and what you don't like, what you like doing 
and do it. When you determine what you don't like, stop doing it. And then find out your strengths and engage it at work. Don't ask yourself, what do you do right? Ask yourself, what do you do well? Make it your mission to find out your strengths, engage in your strength and manage around your weaknesses. Weaknesses reveal little about your strengths, right? Take your strengths and engage it at work. And if you are at a job that it does not engage your strengths, then you will never be successful, my friend. Action step three, to determine your weaknesses and manage around them. See, one of my strengths is that I am goal oriented. If you go in my office, you'll see all my goals for the year, my yearly goals, my yearly goals is broken down in monthly goals. My wife really hate it, right? So on my wall is July right now. Uh, on my wall is January through July. On my wall, she hate it, right? But every time I sit at my computer, as I, my eyes raise up past my monitor, I'm looking at my goals every single day. I'm goal oriented, and that's why I get things done faster than most, and that's why I get things done, because I am goal oriented. I take my yearly goals, I break them to months. I take my monthly goals, and I break them into weekly action items. And I take those weekly action items and then divide them into develop my daily tasks. I come to work every single day and ask myself one question. <clears throat> Excuse me, what, whatever I'm doing, is it moving me closer to my goals or moving me away from my goals? If it moves me closer to my goals, I keep on keeping on. If it's moving me away from my goals, I stop it. So my only thing I'm doing ever is marching to my goals and work around my weaknesses. <laughs> Step four, you gotta take some tests. You know, psychometrics test, they call it, right? It measures your mental capabilities and your behavioral style. You know, you got to recognize what environment you're working in. So a couple things that, that when you are in a culture and it goes against your behavioral style, you're not going to be successful. You're not. You can't be. It goes against what you are created to do. So take some tests like, Meyer Briggs and the, and the Brinkman first look and strength finders. It gives you the ability to find out who you are, what, what you bring to the table, the gifts that you have inside you, the behaviors that you do just naturally find what those are. And number five, write down your action plan. Just like I write down my goals, everything I do on a monthly basis, is written down and I track to it. So those are the five action steps. And you're like, darn it, why you need to be self-aware? Listen, if you don't know who you are, how are you gonna go get the job of your dreams? If you cannot identify who you are, you can't identify the job of your dreams. See, when I recognized that I didn't like IT, I disengaged from it immediately. So I figure out then, then what? do I have for the marketplace? Coaching, career coaching. See, <laughs> unbeknownst to me, I created a, a, a plan, a process, a, a method of getting employed. I have been employed by 25 different companies. To get those 25 companies, I had to submit over 5,000 resumes. How the heck, Darnell, you know you submit 5,000 resumes? I keep track of everything. I have a method, a plan, a process, a procedure. I have had over 300 interviews. Those 5,000 resumes got me 300 interviews. Those 300 interviews got me 25 jobs. Yeah, I have turned down more jobs than you will ever have in your career. I was a perpetual job hopper, job seeker, job obtainer, and now I know exactly how to do it now. Yes, sir. I, yes, ma'am. Yes, my friend, I do. So that's what I bring to the table. I am a career coach, and I tell you exactly what you do because I've done it before. So that's how you do it.
You have to become self-aware to identify the perfect career for you. Because if you don't, all you will ever be is average. And average people get fired. That's right. Average people get fired. So if you like all what I'm talking about, how to engage what I was talking about, then I, what, I, what, I, what I want you to do is go down to my website and give me your name and email address. And if you do, if you do, my friend, I got something special for you. I got a three-part series called How to Play This Career Game to Win. This career game has changed. And if you don't recognize it, you will lose, my friend. If you like this video, on the right side of the screen is my subscribe button. Click on it and subscribe to my channel. And if you like everything I'm talking about, ask me questions. Any question that you have, I will give you the answer. Yes, sir, I will. Yes, ma'am, I will. Ask your question and I'll give you the answer. This is Darnell Clark, your industry leader in this career game, the answer man saying, become self-aware so you could truly find out what you were passionate and created to do. Until next time, be blessed.